The game has changed, my friend. I am currently in my brand new underground lab slash studio slash home office space thing, and I am super excited to be down here. This thing's like a combination of the Batcave and Dr. Farnsworth's laboratory. This is my work stool, and over there is my intergalactic spaceship, and here's where I keep assorted lengths of wire. And after a year of working on the new old house that we moved into, I finally get to start moving my stuff into the new space. I am super hyped. Here, check this out. Yeah, here you go. And take a look at all that. There's my awesome view, some cinder blocks. Maybe you can see the mess. Okay, so maybe not super exciting because right now it's just cinder blocks and a window and some paper, but we're getting there, man. We are getting there. And hopefully in the upcoming weeks, months, I will finally be able to finish out this awesome subterranean lair. Whoa. And to christen this awesome new space, I was going to make a video where we like dove into bare metal programming on a brand new, well, sort of brand new AVR chip, uh, the AT Mega 128, I think it was. And so I ordered up some AT Mega 128s and a pick kit four, cause why not? Let's just go all out. And then I started to get the emails that my shipment was delayed and it wouldn't be here. And now it's been a week and still nothing. So I thought instead, why don't I make a video on why none of us can get electronics and like what some of the repercussions are and maybe some of what we're doing to work around those problems and the implications and all that sort of stuff. So, all right, that's what today is gonna be about is why can you not buy a video card or, you know, like a new camera or a whole bunch of other gear that would be really cool to have right now? what happened to all the electronics. So this is kind of a funny topic because it is both really simple and really complicated. It's really simple because the answer is COVID. And so we could just sort of end it there. Was that good content? But what's really getting highlighted here is just how complex the process of making electronics is. And so the ripple effect of COVID actually starts at the very top, the very raw resources that make your electronics. You know, you have a capacitor, maybe it comes in a little aluminum can. Okay, well, even like the bauxite mines where they mine up some rocks that eventually get turned into aluminum, those things were shut down for a little while because get this, Everything was shut down for a little while. And so the entire chain, everything from the actual acquisition of the very most raw materials, right through to things like, you know, foundries and whatnot, where they turn these things into something that, you know, a, a manufacturing house can actually use, all the way through to the logistical chain that actually delivered those goods to the manufacturing plants that make things like, you know, ICs and passive components and whatever. Everyone was off for a while. And so supply just simply dried up. And then to make matters worse, because everybody was sitting at home, they realized that they hate their house and they find it very unentertaining. So they all ran to the store and they bought themselves TVs and new computers and new computer parts and laptops. And then they got stimulus checks and bought phones and stereos and all sorts of crazy electronics gear. And so obviously once these things flew off the shelf, there was no new components to make new products. And now you've got yourself a global shortage. What's that you say? Maybe they could just open a new manufacturing plant. Fat chance, it's not gonna happen because this whole thing is about money for these people. They're not in you know, some game where it's just a charity to make a bunch of electronics components. So they're not gonna build an entire new plant and staff it and tool it and all those great things just so they could get back on track a little bit sooner. Not to mention by the time they actually build it, they'll be most of the way back anyway. Instead, what's really preventing everything from moving forward is that it takes a long time to make components, right? So so the lead times on components, uh, they might traditionally be something like, I don't know, 12 weeks. So if a component starts to go out of stock, the manufacturing plant can't just whip up more new ones. What they have to do is they have to like retool an entire part of the floor and get all the materials in and all that sort of good stuff. And it takes, you know, something like you know, three or four months to get all that stuff together and actually get those components made again. And now since there's already a backlog, I've seen lead times that are looking like they're pushing out to something like, you know, 40 some weeks. I actually saw one the other day for a dev board for a project that I'm super amped about, but I'm not gonna tell you about yet. We'll save it for another video. But I went to get a dev board, 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 
board. I went to get a dev board for this project and uh, there was only like 10 left. I feel super lucky to have gotten one because the lead time on these dev boards is now listed at something like 44 weeks. That's insane. It is currently March, 2021. 44 weeks is the better part of a year, which pushes us into quarter one next year, 2022. And that, I think, is when you will finally start to see this industry catch up with all the backlog that they have and start to see consumer electronics goods come back down in price uh, to what they were sort of pre-COVID. And that is a total bummer because if you were waiting on some you know, latest, greatest thing, then you're still probably going to have to wait a few more months before these things start to become readily available. You might be looking at the fall before things like video cards say become widely available again. I got a new RTX 3080. Maybe even more interesting is what's happening in the industry. So, you know, a lot of the extremely common components are the ones that are right now the most difficult to come by. Uh, and what that means is that, you know, a lot of the, the simplest goods that would have just simply uh, integrated a really common microcontroller, something like, I don't know, like the STM32F103 that's in like everything and used to be able to get it for less than a dollar. All of a sudden the prices for those are kind of creeping up a lot and there's not a lot of supply on hand to build new stuff with. So sure, that inflates the price of those things, but it also makes product designers, people like me, question whether to use really common components in new designs. I mean, think about it. Sure, they're really common, which makes them super easy to work with and means that in a good period, uh, you know, where there's not some sort of pandemic or something, the prices for those things tend to be really low because the manufacturers tend to make tons of them. You know, they're always making new ones. It's not like you have to wait the, the lead time to get these parts because there's always new ones coming off the line. But if I can take a look at a new platform, learn something new, and then put that in a product, which then I feel somewhat confident is almost pandemic proof because I'll probably still be able to get, uh, you know, something out of the, the existing supply of those chips. Maybe that's something I look into. But then I think to myself, well, maybe not. You know, all of a sudden, uh, the weather's starting to get nicer. People are getting vaccinated. They're going to start going outside. And so in all likelihood, sales are going to decrease in the tech realm just a little bit, which is going to leave a lot of leeway for the manufacturers to catch up with demand. And on the other side of that, I expect the cost of the really common components to go back down. So maybe it makes sense to stick with those components because, you know, in a year's time, which a product being developed today, be lucky if it hits the shelves in a year, in a year's time, these things will be relatively back to normal. And, you know, maybe that keeps the cost down of the final product. I don't know. I can kind of see it going both ways. I guess it depends on the product, what I would recommend. Why don't you let me know down in the comments down below what you think uh, about that whole situation. I definitely think that you're going to see developers take a little bit bigger risks in introducing new components, new platforms into products. But I think that generally speaking, you'll see a rollback to, you know, most of the really common components. All right, thank you so much for joining me in my super cool underground laboratory here. Uh, I had a fun time today. Make sure you check down in the description down below for links to the stuff that we talked about. If there was anything to post, maybe some news or something like that. Uh, hit the like button down below if you enjoyed the video. Uh, comment down there because I love hearing from you guys. And uh, yeah, that'll do it for today. I'll check you out next time.